I want to just summarise where we are since we since the second wave of infection. So we had the second wave of infection in January this year, and it lasted about a month. And what I'm presenting to you here is the cases that we've had after that second wave of infection. And what you can see currently in the bailiwick today, we have 16 active cases. We had no cases at all yesterday, no new cases, and 17 of those cases are recovered, so we call them um, closed cases, and we've had no, no deaths and no hospitalization, which is really encouraging. So that's a snapshot of COVID activity as we see it in the bailiwick today. But I think, as always, it's important to analyze exactly what we're looking at. And of particular importance to us is the age and sex profile of people who are getting COVID. Now, this is important because we know that morbidity and mortality with COVID is predominantly seen in those older age groups. So looking and analyzing our data is important. So you can see by far the majority of our cases have been seen in the 20 to 24 year old age group. Now, that's not surprising because it's that age group that haven't yet been fully vaccinated. But what you see is we're seeing relatively few cases in those older age groups, particularly in the fully vaccinated ages. So as we move on, we take that data, we use that data to inform our response because looking at our local evidence is so important. But particularly looking at the update of what's going on is that we've got no cases in hospital, as I've already said. We've also got no evidence of community seeding. So all of our cases have been identified either as incoming travellers or for, through contact with a known case, so people that we're proactively testing. There have also been questions on self-isolating, and no, we don't have thousands of people self-isolating in the bailiwick. In fact, we have 27 people who are self-isolating as a result of being in direct contact with a, tra with a case. So when we do our contact tracing, we look very carefully at what the precise definition of a close contact is. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. And that's why our contact tracing interviews tend to take three quarters of an hour or so, because we've trying to define whether someone is a close contact or not. And that is of fundamental value in ensuring that we only put appropriate people into self-isolation. So one of the things we've always done, and I know you're always aware of, is our symptomatic testing. So we've always had a very proactive symptomatic testing policy. And a couple of weeks ago, when I came to the press conference, I said we were expanding the symptoms for testing to include some of the things that were being reported on the Zoe app, which is a surveillance that's done in the UK, as being more prominent in younger people with a Delta infection, Delta variant of concern. And in fact, that included things like runny nose, sore throat, bit of a headache, so it's almost symptoms of a cold. Um, and we've included those into our diagnostic criteria. That, of course, is reflected in more people coming forward for testing, which we welcome. And a couple of days ago, and it's, it's sustained at about that level, we did about 150 symptomatic tests. Now, we know in addition to seasonal allergies and so on, there are other respiratory viruses. Indeed, other jurisdictions are seeing coughs and colds not related to COVID as well. So we've had 150 symptomatic people. None of those people had COVID. So I think that provides us with important evidence to continue to inform our response. But I think it's also important to link that with a healthy realism. We are moving forward. We need to learn to live with COVID. We will see cases in our community. We may indeed see outbreaks of infection, and that we are expecting, and we are prepared for it. The contact tracing program is fully operational. Our contact tracers are fully trained. We continue to have a bank of trained contact tracers who are back in their day jobs. At a, within a heartbeat, they will join us. Um, we've had huge support from within the states of Guernsey and actually for employers be, from employers beyond the states of Guernsey. And should we need those contact tracers, they will be back with us doing their job. So I think, again, that provides hopefully a level of assurance that all of those programs are still operational. The sequencing of variants of concern, that program's going well, and we hope to have that operational by the end of July. So again, provides us with an additional way of analyzing any risk posed to us within the bailiwick.